Hi there, everybody. It's Kendra here. Today, I have a cross-stitch only episode for you. So it's more of a floss tube than what I usually do, which is kind of a mix of knitting and spinning and stitching. But I have been doing a lot of stitching this summer and I have made a few spinning videos, not recently, but my last few videos have been all about spinning wool. And I actually have a few more that I put, I filmed, but I haven't edited. So I expect those to go up at some point. Now that the summer is kind of winding down and we're getting into fall, I think there'll be a little more time for some of that. But I do have a big pile of stitching and I thought I would go through it and show you all the things that I have been working on over the summer. You know, I really started the summer thinking I'm going to put out a bunch of videos this summer and I was doing that for like a couple weeks and then I got really overwhelmed and kind of just took a total step back and it's been good. We've been doing other stuff here. I have three kids and we went on a uh, camping trip and we had a few weddings and we've just had lots of fun doing things around home too. And so throughout all of that, I have been doing a little bit of stitching here and there. I've got a few projects finished, a few that I have started, a few plans. And so I'm going to go over all that with you today. So first up, I, in my last video, only showed two cross-stitch items. And I even went back to check because it's been a while now. And I was trying to figure out where I was at. So first up was this pattern. It is from an Etsy shop called The Stitch Patterns. I don't know why I always get the order of those words wrong. So I'll write that down below just to confirm that that's correct. And I'll also do my best to link um, all these patterns down in the description box if you wanna go check them out. This one is called, what is it called? Well, because it's an Etsy shop, you know how the title has a really long name and it was three patterns together. So it was like the animal trio, but it was like sweet cat. And I don't know, each one of these, there's a deer cat and a bunny. <laughs> so last time I had only finished the top one and had just started the second. And now I have finished this whole piece and included, or finished it all the way, fully finished it on this backing. So I'll zoom you in a little bit here and you can see. So this is the first one that I did. And I did make a few color substitutions just using what I had on hand, but it's all pretty similar to what the original was. Then the second was this bunny, which again, I only had a little bit done on the face. And when I worked on this, you see the dark, maybe, I don't know if you can see the dark colors in the face. Originally, I had used an even darker color and I just wasn't happy with how it looked. And so it kind of sat for a while while I decided what to do. And ultimately I did decide to rip it out and restitch it. And I'm happy with it. I think it all kind of works together now. And it's a lot more similar to what the original called for. And finally, this cat. I stitched this one basically entirely on the trip we took. It was about 14 hours driving each way. And I was able to do all the stitching in that time. Pretty much, there was a few odds and ends to finish up, but generally that was completed at that time. This is stitched on a piece of 16 count antique white Ada, or that's how it was sold to me at least. Um, it was just from an Etsy seller. It was like a extra scrap basically when I was ordering a few other fabrics. And I picked up this backing fabric from, I think it was from Michaels. It was just, or maybe it was Walmart. It was one of like a little roll that you can buy of just a bit of fabric, but it ended up being enough. I just did a solid piece on the back and a little binding and a string back here to hang it by. And so this is going in my daughter's room. Uh, I've got two girls and they're together in there and I thought this would be really cute to go in their bedroom. Also, my daughter had suggested putting in some flowers in between each of these when we were initially, um, after I'd stitched it, she suggested putting those flowers in. And I thought about it, I tried to draw some up um, on my pattern program, but ultimately I decided to go with these little buttons instead. I thought it just added like a little bit extra dimension to it, uh, rather than just more pinkish peach stitching in between. Um, I thought it would kind of tie them together. So there's those two and then in between these animals here as well. And I'm really happy with that and how it looks all together. So here it is. And this next one isn't one that I finished, but recently when I was working on this, it reminded me of a cross stitch piece that I had in my room growing up and one that my aunt had made for me. And so I asked my mom if I could have it back and it was just in with some of my other old things. And so it's this one here that she had stitched when I was a baby and was always, yeah, just hanging in my bedroom. And so when I got, I finished them right around the same time. So I decided to hang them up kind of next to each other, kind of on a corner in the girl's room. And I think they're really cute. And nice to see some stitching in there. 
So my next project is one I hadn't even started last time, but I decided to join in with Stitch and Stuff, which is a floss tube channel here on YouTube, and they were hosting a Biscornu cell. Now a Biscornu is like a small pillow and in cross stitch usually they're stitched and um, they were showing a bunch of patterns uh, that people were selecting and I decided to take a look and see if there's any that I liked and I decided to go with this which is Crosswind Collection Chipping Sparrow Biscore Nest. Also um, on YouTube there was Amy Loves Toads which is another uh, creator here who had made this and I saw her finish of it and I thought it looked so cute that I decided that this was the route I wanted to go to make a Biscornu for myself. So I stitched it as it was recommended on 28 count even weave and this here is my finished Biscor nest or Biscornu. Now it was obviously full coverage and you really just stitch two squares and then rotate them so that the point of one goes into the side of the other square. There's lots of videos showing how to sew them together. Ultimately you get this shape right here. So even though it was full coverage, it is so small. The squares were I think three and a quarter inches um, front and back. And so most of it is stitched over two, the whole back part here and then the nest part is all stitched over two but these little eggs are stitched over one and I just love the effect it gives there's so many different colors and that shading just really gives it a lot of depth and it really does look like a little nest we actually just finished putting in these kind of um, honeycomb shelves on our wall and I have this in there and it just makes me smile every time I see it so this was a really fun little finish and it was really easy to put together so definitely something I would make again or make like another biscordu that is but I just love these little eggs so this is another finish and I just picked up two beads that I had here it was actually in the kids bead kit <laughs> to put front and back that just kind of helps anchor it when you um, you put a stitch in the middle to pull it in like this and uh, yeah just use some beads I had here on hand now I do have one more finish but I have gifted it so I have a family member that got married and I'd already given her a gift but they were doing like another shower type thing because she got married during COVID when everything was shut down so it was with a lot of people from church so I decided to make her one of those stitched portraits using um, kind of the pixel people I've heard them called different things stitch portraits stitch people pixel people something like that and uh, so I kind of modeled, modeled it after their wedding pictures and I'll put in some pictures here so you can see and I used um, a little bit of stitching like cross stitch and a little bit of embroidery and I included some tool that came from the uh, ring bearer pillow my son was the ring bearer and so I just snipped a little off the edge and used it in there and uh, this is kind of what I ended up with for the finished item and so I gifted that this weekend so I don't have it to show but it was just another thing that I was working on all right so we're getting into the whips now those are all the things I finished at least all the things I could remember it's been a few months now since I've showed you any stitching but I have some whips one that you have seen several times and it is the potting shed by Amy Stewart charted by heaven and earth designs I'm stitching this one over one on 25 count easy grid uh, even weave so I'll first of all put in the final picture of what it will look like according to Hade. Um, I just love this artwork. I love the colors in it and I really find that I'm drawn to the pieces where I love using those thread colors. It just, I don't want to put them down when it's colors that I love. So this is the piece and uh, here I'll show you where I was at last time. I know with these full project pieces it's hard to see the difference and I haven't worked on this a ton because I have been working on other things but I have definitely picked it up here and there. Um, but this is where it is at now. So I'll pull it back here and then I'll hold it up for a close up. But this is all part of the shed here. And the shed is getting closer to being done. So far, I think the middle of the piece is right around here. And then over here, it's like up in about this zone. So I hit 20, 20 some percent complete on it now. Zooming you up. I had been missing a lot of colors in this area where I just didn't have the thread color so I skipped over them and then 
I guess in July maybe, I picked up all the colors that I was missing and have been working them in. So even though it doesn't look that much different, I filled in a lot of holes in here, a lot of confetti bits. So filling in all these little bits has taken time, but it really does, I just love the effect of seeing it so solid. So we have, these are the windows along the side, this hanging basket, this is this decorative stained glass window, and this is the entryway with the door. And so you can kind of see these windows are like this, but seeing through to the other side. And then coming down here, this is where the wheel will be. So it's gonna come down like this. This is the base of the shed. Well, I guess it's like a wagon. And then there's gonna be flowers and yeah, just all of this coming together. It's really satisfying to see the colors work together and just how one tiny little stitch, and as I zoom in, you can see each stitch is very small, but it really does give this beautiful effect. And it takes a lot of color changes to achieve this gradual shading, but it's something, it's like the artistic side of me just loves seeing it come to be and seeing how those colors can play together. So a little bit of progress on this, but uh, definitely still some more work to be done too. Now, another project that I was working on, um, I guess back in July, and I got a portion of it done and I've been kind of making an effort that even though I like, in general, being a monogamous stitcher, I like to finish projects. And so once I get about three quarters of the way done, usually I start to get tired of my project. And instead of just putting it down, I will do what I've heard other people call like rage finishing, where you're not really enjoying it, but there's this push to see the final product. And I definitely could still do that. I have this like pull, like maybe I should just do that. But in the interest of enjoying the hobby and uh, not wanting to do that and then not want to stitch anything for like weeks after because I'm sick of it, I decided I'm just going to try to rotate projects instead. And once I hit that point, I'm just going to take a break from that project. And it's really been working in keeping me interested in stitching, um, but not being yeah, having, feeling like I just have to get something done, especially because these things don't have deadlines. They're just for fun and I'm trying to keep it that way. So with that in mind, I am stitching a couple of the animals in sweaters from Micah Stitch on, I think Micah Stitch Design on Etsy. So last December, I stitched this little hedgehog here you may recall, and he has a lot of back stitching, and I finished him, and while I love the series, I love how he looks, I had definitely kind of grown a little bit weary or tired of doing all this back stitch. So I was happy to give it a little bit of a break, but I came back to it by stitching the beaver. So that's this guy, lady maybe, in a purple sweater, right here. You will see she's not complete, she has no tail still. <laughs> but I got to this point, I thought I'm gonna do a section, I'm gonna do the back stitching, and I will come back to it <laughs> when I feel like finishing it. And it's really not too much to finish now. The bulk of it has been completed, um, but I do still have, there's some ground around the bottom and then of course the whole tail. But that will not be too bad, I don't think. Um, so I do have her to finish up at some point. Again, there's so many colors and shading in these sections, like in the sweater there. And uh, things that when you look at it, it just kind of gives it dimension where it looks like she's wearing the sweater. But just things that I would, I don't know that I would think of to put the shading in the exact places where the designer did, but it's definitely effective. And it's really fun to look at and to see it all come together. How a few stitches here and there can create such a beautiful piece. So this beaver is in progress and I do want to do one more. I have the reindeer one. That's gonna be my third. So I'm going to make something with them in the end. I'd originally thought of doing something like I finished for that other trio, that wall hanging, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. There's a whole bunch in this series. And while I think three would be good, maybe in the future I will want to add more to it. So having some sort of system or maybe I could do this set and then do another set in the future, but I'm just kind of waiting to finish them until I have a better idea on what would work together. So this is the update on my little animal and sweater series. And I do hope to make more of them in the future and come back to it. I'm stitching this on a 32 count. I think it's Swagart that is natural and dots or something like that. And that's really just because in the pattern they put in a ton of snowflakes. And I saw some other people stitching this on the dotted fabric. And then you only stitch the snowflakes that are like over top of the animal. And I think it still works and looks pretty cute. So very much glad to do that if that means not counting out and putting in a bunch of single stitch snowflakes in the background. I totally forgot I have one more partially finished. Now a few months ago, 
may remember, I showed you this stitch piece that I did. I'm gonna gift it, and I had plans to turn it into a pillow. So while I had my sewing machine out the other day, I sewed on, it's kind of, it feels like a, a suede, like a faux suede, and um, I think it looks nice together, but I do wanna put a trim around the edge, which I plan on hand stitching. I just don't have it figured out yet. I had a few options, but nothing looked exactly right. So I am gonna wait to, to fully finish this, probably gonna be for Christmas, but it's a quick little update on how it is looking so far. I think it came out pretty cute as a pillow. I really like this super stuffed look, but that is how we're looking. Okay, back to the other whips. This next one is actually embroidery. Now, when I was doing those stitch people, I really was thinking about how I should do like the hair and the, just to get better shading in these areas. And actually one person who I was very inspired by is called Sabbatical Stitching. So I'll link her down below, but she does these beautiful animal portraits that are all embroidered and the shading she gets in these pieces is just so beautiful. And then I started looking up different like thread painting, things like that. And so I decided to start on this little bird. <laughs> now. I gave him a start, but it is challenging to get these this shading going on, and um, it's a robin. It's got the red belly that hasn't been put in yet, but I was just practicing getting some shading in, using, like, even in this body has, like, a ton of different colors, although, again, I'm not very skilled at it to get it looking the way I want it to, but it's all about practice, so I thought maybe if I did a little bit here and there, it will help me um, to achieve the effect that I would like to see. So... This was just a fun piece that I uh, started on. Haven't picked it up lately, but I just traced a picture and used a, a washable pen on the fabric and thought, I'll give it a go and see what I can learn and figure out for myself. That's definitely the sort of project that's like on the back burner. Not, I'm not feeling pressed to get it done, but it's just some skills I might you know, like to develop. So while I was looking at those animal portraits, I kind of got in my head that maybe I'd like to stitch an uh, animal portrait. So again, trying to get ahead on some Christmas gifts and things, I decided to use a photograph and convert it using my stitch program and uh, see if I could do a really detailed animal portrait using just X's. So here's the picture. I'll show you the kind of the process and then the stitched view of what it should look like when it is completed. Again, this is my own, you know, picture and pattern. So I feel fine showing you all this. And so this is how the stitching is looking so far. It is one over one on 28 count even weave. And it has, I put in a lot of colors. You can see this dog has curly hair. And even in this stitching, you really can't see all the shading. I have, I think 120 colors in the final piece. So I don't have them all in there yet, but I have put in probably like 70 colors so far and it just looks so cream, but I'm really hoping it comes together and gives it some, some shape in the end because looking at it, I keep looking and saying like, you would not be able to tell all the subtle changes between all these shades of cream in this dog. And so, um, again, it's kind of an experiment. I think it'll work out even if it's not as detailed as I might like, but it's this, again, this idea of super tiny little stitches, tons of colors and seeing how much detail I can pack in. And I also think once it's kind of, once it's finished and you hold it back a little bit, it will be a lot easier to see the animal, even though some of those details that I feel like the efforts put in to put in all these color changes, even though it's hard to see. But I've been working on this a lot and then just decided I needed a little break from it. Again, at that point of like three quarters of the way done, do I rage finish it or do I take a break? It's not on a deadline right now or anything. I'm kind of thinking for Christmas, which is months away. And if I just buckled down, it wouldn't take me very long. So. I figure I'm going to give it a little break from all of these white and cream stitches and come back to it uh, when I'm ready, <laughs> once I've had a little break. But yeah, so I'm interested to see how that ends up. Um, it's hard sometimes to tell from the stitched view like what it will actually look like with all those subtle changes again. Um, and that's, I think, a situation where that embroidery really brings it to life in a way that cross stitch doesn't. Um, but anyways, interested to see how that will end up. So I have one more work in progress, I think. I feel like I'm missing something, but that's all that's coming to mind right now. So it's all I'm going to show you. It's another Etsy shop pattern. And the pattern company is called Light 
let me look it up. The Etsy shop is called Light Unicorn Designs and they have a lot of really nice animal pictures and like kind of watercolor pictures, which I really like. I like the art side of it and something that's a little more than just a photo converted, although I mean, obviously I like those too. And so it is the Chameleon. This is one that my son picked out. Um, so I'm stitching it to go into his room and this is where it is at right now. This is stitched over two on 28 count and uh, I have been loving it. Again, these colors, these blues and greens, right up my alley, I just love it. And see, this side goes straight ahead, this one kind of goes to the side and then up in here, it's kind of um, looks watercolor, like a watercolor effect in the end. So I'm really excited. There's also a lot under underneath, but I'm kind of working my way up and then I'll come back and finish the bottom part here but I am just loving putting this in. I just put in a whole bunch of stitches this weekend on it. It's such a nice project to pick up, especially after doing so much over one stitching. It's a really nice change to do some over two. And he's going to be a fair size, um, bigger than like a lot of these other things I'm working on, but I think it will look really great in my five-year-old son's bedroom. And he loves it and he loves seeing it come to be and wants me to work on it all the time so it'll get done but he knows that it just takes time and um yeah it's kind of the process of it all so all of these are just using dmc threads that's all i ever use basically and um it's still so effective and even in this one if you look at say the blues or the greens there are so many color changes and i just love it <laughs> I don't always love stitching it, but this one's kind of nice. It does have some blocks of color, but there are just so many different shades of color in there. And it just, the effect it gives is just, I feel like it's just unmatched. You really need those color changes to get the full effect. So this has been a lot of fun to work on and I'm going to work on it probably a few more days and then switch off again. I've been trying to, again, switch before I get totally sick of something and don't want to look at it anymore. So that has been good. So those are all of my stitching projects as far as I can remember, the things I've been making lately. I hope you like to see the progress. Um, as far as future plans, I, I mean, I plan to keep going on all of these. I think this one is not too far off of a finish. The dog's not too far off of a finish. The hay has a long way to go. And I just like to pick that up in between other projects, work on it for like a few days, get a few thousand stitches in every few weeks. And I kind of like that process. So I'll probably keep on with that. I do have one more Etsy shop pattern that I do plan on stitching by the stitch patterns. Uh, it's these birds and folk flowers, uh, but I do plan on dyeing some fabric for it and I haven't gotten around to that yet. So that is something that I plan on doing. I have been planning on doing it for a while. I uh, just haven't sat down to do it yet, um, but really looking forward to that. And I do plan to get back to doing some knitting and spinning and things like that other fiber crafts but again this is just sticking to the stitching progress that I have made lately. I have been thinking about joining the um, I think it's magazine monthly doing the ABC Ingo. It's like a bingo challenge where you put your projects on this list and they call the numbers um, or doing something where there's like a prompt to work on something mainly because I have one more project that is not included in here. Pinky that was one that a pattern that my grandma had actually started and then I restarted it when I received the pattern and it's one I just, I never really want to pull out, but I do want to finish it. So um, doing something where I have a plan to work on that at least a few times in the month would be really nice. But I have trouble thinking that I want something else to dictate what I work on because I do like kind of hopping around as the mood strikes. Although this summer I have been liking switching between things a little more than I usually do. So I don't know, just still mulling that over whether taking part in a stitching challenge would be beneficial or whether it would feel really restrictive. So I haven't decided on that yet, uh, but we will see. Anyways, I think I'm going to go. It's a rainy day. I built a pretty cool fort for my kids, not gonna lie, but they stacked it with books and I hear uh, some sounds coming from there. So they're probably ready for me to get back. Uh, but thank you for checking out what I've been working on. Let me know what you're working on. I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.